everyone. Today we will welcome Charlie Pemberton. Charlie is a great digital strategist who has been doing some brilliant work to help transform the businesses of the clients he's been working with. Whether that's digital strategy, content, or traditional marketing and business approaches, he's been able to get under the skin of these projects he's worked with. He'll be showing us his work on Spinta, how he uses it to do his work, how he writes down uh, his, his thoughts and ideas. So let's not wait anymore. Let's get it started. All right. Thank you very much, Charlie, for joining me today. Uh, so this is a Springdale users workflow series that we're starting. And before jumping in and checking how your Springdale looks like, we can start with a brief introduction. Um, perhaps we, you can tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do for a living, and uh, things like that. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I'm Charlie Penwarden, and I'm a marketing consultant and mental health consultant at the same time uh, as well. So predominantly, uh, I work uh, with my own marketing agency, and we have some freelance contractors uh, who specialize in organic growth marketing, uh, mainly focused uh, on search engine optimization, but also user experience uh, and CRO which kind of all fit together uh, as well. Um, but also I'm a mental health consultant that works on strategies uh, for organizations uh, to increase and improve their well-being of their employees. But I'm also a really keen uh, product builder as well. And also I'm trying to redesign the mental health system uh, here in the UK uh, and globally as well. So uh, I've got a lot going on uh, at the moment, but mainly marketing uh, and mental health uh, are the two main things that I cover off. Yeah, and uh, I know that you have been using the Spintel for, for some time already, um, but can you tell me what led you to search for a tool like Sprintel or um, I don't know if you were using other tools and you were not that happy or you just simply came across the tool and decided to give it a go? Yeah, I suppose... It's a difficult one. I'll just try and think back uh, to when I first started using it. I think it was January 2022. And I suppose a lot of my work is certainly in, in marketing is creating uh, a lot, going through some research uh, and formulating plans, strategies, visualizing those plans or trying to visualize those plans, communicating those to clients mm. and also reporting on, on activity and performance as well so I suppose at the moment or certainly it has been previously I feel like it's quite disjointed in my workflow mm. and it can jump from a google doc to google sheets to google slides and then uh, maybe into another program or yeah. diving into Miro or you know somewhere <clears throat> like uh, maybe uh, on Slack notes or I'm emailing myself notes. So there wasn't really one coherent single workspace that I could take notes, formulate some research, pull together strategy, but also visualize a lot of the content marketing activity um, that I was focusing on uh, at the time. And then obviously came across uh, Sprint Tool. And I think previously I was really trying hard to make Miro work for me for this because of mm. similar functionalities with cards. But then I would try and create site maps for websites and content clusters. And these things that require a level of depth and explanation in the cards, not just the visualization mm -hmm. of the cards being linked uh, in that sense. So yeah, Squintle really hit a perfect time for me where I was struggling to explore the level of depth and detail, but also show that uh, visualized connective links um, between all of the cards and, and the marketing activity. So um, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for sharing that. And I think that's probably the case of most of our users, at least those consultants uh, that, that have been using the screen tool, uh, have a similar uh, issue when they come to us. 
Uh, okay, now, but let, let's get started. Perhaps you can, I know that you have something perhaps over there to share with me. Um, you can start by sharing your, your screen tell, and then you can tell me what you, what you have there prepared. Yeah, it sounds good. So I'll just share uh, initially uh, my screen here. Perfect. Now, obviously starting with, with a blank canvas here, but the two main boards that I'm able to show you publicly uh, mm -hmm. at the moment, I do, I do manage uh, about 10 to 12 client projects that are focused on content marketing and organic growth um, that all, will all follow uh, this same uh, process uh, and workflow. But um, this one I'm going to share with you first uh, is from one of my niche content sites that I'm uh, building and growing mm. called Behavo. Uh, and I, I treat Behavo like a client. We took investment uh, towards the latter end of 2022 uh, to drive forward uh, that growth in, in there. And one thing that I've been using Squintle for re really well and, and it's been a perfect example of, of the power of Squint Tool um, for me personally is, is, is in content clusters and topic clusters. Um, so for those that don't know what, what they are, they're essentially a, a really necessary and important driver of search engine growth, uh, organic growth, uh, by showcasing to search engines and obviously to the user um, that you and the website have a really well-rounded authority on the topic uh, with plenty of depth that covers off a really broad range of, of topics and subtopics. Um, and that just shows a level of trust to search engines. And it's, it's a really important part of, of SEO and part of content marketing um, for me as well. So I'll dive in uh, to show you how I have this worked out at the moment. Hopefully they should look like there's some formulation of, of a pillar post and a subtopic post here. Um, there's mm -hmm. many ways of describing topic clusters, but the best yeah. one that I find used is, is most helpful visually is the hub and spoke model of a wheel. And this is where I think it perfectly showcases uh, screen tools value uh, as well. So what you essentially see in the middle here, I'll zoom, I'll zoom in to get the detail in a, in a minute. Um, I'll just move these cards out of the way. What yeah. you essentially have, the, the gray box in the middle is my mm -hmm. central nucleus, uh, essentially. That's the website, uh, the website name, any additional information that we need. Uh, and then I have the immediate hubs of topics that, that fit within that card. Uh, that you're then going to see in orange uh, out there. So one hub here, two hub here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a few drafted hubs that I'm working on at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what those hubs, uh, imagine that's the hub, the centre hub of the wheel, and the spokes that come out of the hub uh, are the actual published posts uh, as well. So the hub, you do need a hub uh, topic for for content for, for a page um, and then the really important part for SEO as well with content marketing is that they all interlink with each other and this is where Squint has been a game changer for me for being able to basically showcase the interlinking nature of the website uh, in planning and also when we publish so I'm showing here that yes I have uh, a hub topic that is uh, about, let's say, we, we zoom in a little bit here. We've got uh, a hub topic about mental health, but mm -hmm. then we can link off to a subtopic again and create another topic cluster uh, regarding affirmations. So yeah. those two th those two hubs will have interlinked uh, internal pages uh, that we can really showcase how they're working. Uh, at the moment so one thing uh, I'll show here and my uh, hopefully you can see uh, in, in this sense here what we have is that Behavo is essentially a, a mental health education blog it's my uh, way of attracting users new users for user acquisition um, getting people on board educating them with content uh, and then downloading some guides, maybe clicking on some sponsored links and an affiliate 
uh, links or potentially looking, mm. clicking through onto some adverts uh, in there as well. So if I click into it, these are the content clusters or the topic clusters um, that I have used that then branch out. So these are all the ones you see in orange uh, when, yeah. when I was zoomed out. And if we take uh, mental health for an, for an example, I've just clicked into the orange card uh, for, for mental health. I've got the hashtag in there. It's also tagged uh, as mental health. I've got a quick definition for any writers that I work with, any contractors that need to come in to yeah. Squintle. And that's been a really great part of uh, me watching the development of Squintle over the past uh, over the past year is the the empowering of teams to start working collaboratively with with Squintle. And for me, it's been a really great way of being able to publish the board, sharing that link with my writers or anybody else that needs to work on like subject matter experts, uh, people that are quoting, uh, and they can dive in here, they can check the topics out, they can see if there's any gaps or opportunities um, that we want to focus on. So I've got the definition there. I've got any subtopic topics. So this again is another orange card, which is another hub. And mm -hmm. that links off then to, to men, from mental health. Uh, and then we've got the published content here. So these are all of the titles uh, of the uh, topics that I've published uh, online. Uh, and then if we wanted to, uh, we can dive in, for example. Uh, and what I love about Sprintle again, it's, it's not just showing the cards, it's being able to pull out and now I have a working document and yeah. this was where it really clicked for me being able to take you know not being able to have to spend time in in Google Docs uh, or, or anything like that I, I know I'm in the zone I'm in sprint tool uh, and I can just start uh, adding content maybe dropping some notes in uh, adding videos adding pdf like annotating and, and adding notes uh, on the side of that but what you're seeing here is the actual published content um, that's that's on the website and um, that i'm able to to write down like we said we've got uh, the the youtube video there we've got some faqs and it's just a really nice easy way for me to stay focused on a desktop app um, that isn't in a browser obviously it's great that we've got word counts uh, we can see any any backlinks or any any associate any associated clusters. Uh, we can also see related cards, which again really important um, for, for content marketing and SEO to be able to see that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is this is all how it how it looks um, for me. So I can dive in really quickly. I can get a zoomed out thirty thousand foot view uh, of my my whole content that I have published on on the site at the moment, um, but yes. I've also got the ability to dive in, you know, click in and read the the published um, content that we have there. This is great, and I'm actually um, like surprised, but in in a good sense. Uh, <laughs> and now I I'm wondering, like, how were you able to create all these or follow kind of like build the system or this structure uh given that as you mentioned uh earlier today um you were not that much of an instructor person i guess uh because mm -hmm. you had like some notes here and there and now i can see that everything is in here and that uh yeah i wonder yeah. how you jump from from that person let's say to this person yeah it's a funny one i i wouldn't normally describe myself as a visual thinker or a visual learner um, mm. but for me the certainly this really helps with clients when I showcase clients this and if I showcase an example of them when I talk before if we're, we're in the planning stages and you know we're maybe doing some research we're looking at the strategy when I'm talking about content clusters topics hubs spokes all of these terms like they make sense to me but yeah. it's really difficult to visualize that and to convey that to clients so obviously Squintle here has been perfect to just set up an example and go, this is the level of volume and not necessarily the quality, but this is the volume that you have to produce mm. to, to make your website, to, to make your blog, whatever it is that we're looking to grow. It really hits home that 
oh, we can't do two to four articles a month. We need to be really ramping this up because, you know, we're not touching the sides or we're only scratching the surface on our topical authority. So if I, if I show a client this and go, you know, this is a brand new website, you have a few service pages, you have some location pages and the typical, you know, meet the team, all of those, you know, if, if you've got a search engine crawler looking at your site, yes, you have might have a service that is, you know, mental health consultancy or, you know, counseling service or therapy, something like that. But to Google, you're not a topical authority, not mm-hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. So if I can showcase the 30,000 foot view and also dive into the detail to say, right, on the topic of breath work, this is our starting point. You know, there's eight or ten, uh, eight or ten pieces of an article content that we need to be created on that topic right off the bat, and that's uh, quite a lot of content. You know, it's, it, content takes a while and and whatever, but this this really does help showcase the necessity of the the breadth of topics, but also mm. the depth that's required. Um, and it's really helped me sign off some great projects with clients that were a little bit apprehensive. Uh, about content marketing and the velocity and the volume that's required uh, to to really win and rank highly on on Google. Yeah, that's that's true. And it's it's sometimes it's really difficult to let other know others know what is in our head or what we mean uh, when we are like trying to explain these ideas that we have or yeah. why they are important. So uh, I completely mm-hmm. understand. Um, yeah. Oh, and can you tell me a little bit more about uh, like the steps that you follow or how did you end it up like creating, for instance, this garden? I You, you mentioned wheels. I see, I see flowers. But... <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I suppose it is a garden really if you, if you uh, yeah, if you look at it that way. But um, I suppose the, the way we ended up starting to create this and again, when we look at the structure of an actual article page on or a guide page on on any website it has to follow or it should by best practices follow a certain structure uh, that would normally fit within a folder structure so if you looked at like a contents of a page you have the title then which is the h1 heading you have the subheadings which are the h2 headings then you have the h3 headings that are then the broken down topic even more so. And that fits quite a normal, natural folder structure that, that you have. So I did and I was using Notion, or I, I do use Notion uh, actively um, for more of the project management, task management, uh, kind of asset library, like a like a main workspace, I suppose, for, for client management. Um, so they can dive in, they can see what tasks are happening, they can see what's been published, you know, they can see the plan that's going ahead, but it's very, it's, it's very one dimensional uh, and it doesn't really help much with the strategy. When you, when you showcase that to a client, they can't really see the woods from the trees there because, you know, it's, it's just long lists, databases, you know, Excel spreadsheets, all of those kind of things. Um, yes, you can dive into content, but what you can't show is the connected nature of your content and your content marketing strategy. And here, as you can see, I can really do that uh, in, in detail as well. And if we need to work on uh, anything uh, in in more detail, uh, what I love to do, I'll try and find one here, um, is I think we have this one here. Um, so if I just pull this card out, so if I'm working uh, with with a writer, they can kind of get a really easy, quick feel and gauge of the types of topics that have been published. You know, they can dive straight into the actual content. It's very difficult to do that on a website as well. You know, websites don't aren't being able to be pulled out and visually viewed like like it is in screen tool. So. As a writer's workflow, this has really helped my writers jump in, quickly get a gauge of the topics and the detail, dive in, look at other things, take inspiration, and just kind of move around really freely 
um, within this. So one thing I really uh, I take great importance and pride in with, with the content that we produce is ensuring that we have content briefs for every uh, every piece of uh, content that we create. And a lot of this research, well, I suppose this research is done using other tools uh, like Ahrefs yeah. or SCMrush and yeah. you know other other research tools like that but again there's no real way other than a google doc or sheets that you can consolidate that research and pull mm. it in together but also interlink that so we have our content brief here we go through the intent the audience and draft content titles then yeah. i help help the writer here with what i would suggest uh, the structure be uh, and we have some keywords, FAQs, content inspiration, etc. Uh, and I just hand that over to the writer to just give them a really nice smooth handover uh, to just start knocking out the content, doing the research they can, uh, mm. and and producing producing what we need. And sometimes these guides are five thousand words, sometimes they're five hundred words. Um, but it's been great to be able to have other people come in, work on them together. Uh, and jump back out again because they they can literally fill in the gaps here you know we can delete all of these if we wanted to and say you know this is the one we're going for great Mm. that's a decision made you know moving on I've given an example of of this particular topic here so the, the the writer can just dive in and fill in the gaps so it's made my content workflow Mm. seamless as ever as long as we do the early research and the hard work uh, up at the front it's 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 great and writers absolutely love uh love coming in and seeing all of this in one place uh, interconnected um as well that's right so based on uh, on what you just uh showed me you in this particular or for this particular case um you use the cards as uh like let's say like a long format note like a document where you place Mm -hmm. uh, all the information you or um your colleagues your colleagues uh need in order to make that article let's say uh get like make it done let's say complete it um and you give a lot of thought to the format or to the uh the style, I guess, of your text. You use the different, mm-hmm. uh, the different uh, formats that we can we give you in the text editor, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a document. It's a do, it's document management for us. It's mm-hmm. the first first draft document management um, because you don't need much else. You know, the great thing as well. Yes, you have to have storage elsewhere, and and but I think it's it may feel like it's duplication of work, but Everything in the early research phase and the drafting phase phases ha- happens in screen tool. And all it is is a control A, copy, paste out, and then paste it into a document. If it needs to go to, to a client for approval, mm. for comments, you know, for anything like that, feedback, it can just be copied and pasted into a document with the same formatting, and then uh, away we go. And then that may take its own form. Uh, or we, you know, we can come back to this one, make any edits. Um, but it's not duplication of, of work yeah. at all. It's just more concentrated, and um, because you're you're in one yeah. one application. Uh, and in this for this particular case, uh, do you start from the then from the core, let's say the like the great part, and then from there you start growing uh, or creating the other parts, or could it start from a sub uh, topic, as you might call it before? Yeah. So I do. I do my keyword research uh, in either Notion or, or Airtable from Ahrefs. So mm-hmm. there is a master, there is a master document uh, that has or database that hold all of the the keywords. And with that, you know, you can sort and you can filter, you can group things together. So for for me, I've got my content plan in another application. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'll come back here and I will start, for example, with mental health. And if that, if if I'm if I've run out of research and I haven't got uh, any content planned in there, I'll dive in and I'll look at Sprint Tool and immediately I can say, right, 
what am I missing? Where's the gaps? Where's the opportunities? Yeah. And I know here that I have a few subtopic uh, posts about depression. I've got one on anxiety. I've got a couple on stress. Uh, I've got plenty on affirmations here. So where's my gaps? Where's my opportunities? And I can see that right away that I need some support here. Uh, for example, uh, let's let's take journal prompts, for example, journaling here. This one I know is not being linked too well. It doesn't have much of a broad topic authority around the subtopic of journaling. Mm. Uh, yes, there is some helpful interlinks from other uh, content within that cluster, which is great. But I'm looking at the search engines and I'm going, this is a big uh, opportunity for me to t- start producing more content. So then I'll go off, do some research. I'll add that to my content plan. And I know within a week or two, we'll have bolstered that subtopic of journaling up. And I'll just jump in here, do the content workflow again, copy and paste it out, get it approved. Uh, and then it's it's published uh, as well. So yeah, it, it can be it can be proactive or reactive. My my research, um, depending on uh, where the content plan uh, is going. Sometimes we have to be reactive on new trends of you know things that are starting to get more more publicity uh, to mm-hmm. to jump on those. Other times it will be um, proactive as well. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, if you still have time, you can show me uh, the other uh, mm. the other case that you you had yeah. there that I, I absolutely so you added to the star elements <laughs> yeah <laughs> the- yeah no that's great and um so what i thought i'd show you again today here is a slightly different way of thinking but slightly different use case for 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 screen tools so it's it's only a relatively short uh, starting point but this is me conducting research on redesigning or trying to systematically and strategically uh, redesign or at least provide the research in order to then come up with an operational plan to redesign the, the mental health system as we know it mm-hmm. and a lot of the problems with a big system that's that's uh, an institution uh, essentially like the one in the UK is that there is no, it all has these lots of mini siloed working operations, disconnected trusts, and all of these different things that are happening across the country, different budgets, Mm. different problems. And there's just not one cohesive, centralized uh, understanding that not everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet. And for what I'm trying to do here with Squintle is to allow anybody who's a stakeholder of mine in this project to be able to sing from the same hymn sheet to agree what's happening and to work on it together with a completely aligned understanding and that just never happens because you talk to a psychiatrist you talk Mm. to a nurse you talk to a counsellor you talk to an MP a government official uh, or a patient a service user uh, or a family of those affected, every single one of those persons I just mentioned has a completely different view of the system and a different, uh, in different intentions behind why they want to improve it. And they're all coming from different angles. So you've got a very complex system that has multiple different silos and disconnected parts. You have maybe 15 plus stakeholders that are all thinking about themselves and their own experiences through their own lens. And the, when I mention that and I reiterate that and talk that out loud, it does uh, it does scare me at what what the undertaking that we have here um, is going to take. But it's screen tool for me and for my stakeholders is that one single source of truth to make sure everybody is connected and aligned on on the matters. And we can only do that by, in, in my opinion, um, by by doing this. So. Uh, one thing I've done, this is a publicly shared board, and I have some stakeholders on this project working uh, together with me. It is a working progress, um, so I do apologize uh, for, for that. It may be a little bit messy um, here, but again, super important part of this is I'm now able to pass on and, and onboard 
anybody that clicks this by reading this first. So they get my mm. point of view, they get the issue, they read the why, the what, the how, and and what what's happening essentially, the vision um in, in what what we have here. And the great thing I love about what Squint was able to do in this sense is the users aren't reading one massive document. Mm. They're they're not diving into a little bit of notion here or another tool or a spreadsheet that explains statistics or going off to YouTube or then reading a PDF. It's all centralized so, so everyone can really get a feel for it. So I've kind of taken the user on a bit of a journey here. They start with this readme that you're seeing here. And then I now have uh, the def defining um, the problem uh, here. So I can dive in and dive into the UK. Uh, obviously uh, defining the problem and then I've got the timeline of events so quite quickly I've just allowed somebody to if I just go back here and show you I've taken somebody from here and with no disjointment at all or disconnection I've got them all the way up to here mm -hmm. and it's connected because it's only connected through one two three cards but it's felt very smooth um, and they can they can kind of follow that onboarding journey uh, as they have so they know we're in define the problem we know we're in the uk and we know we've got a timeline of events here so what essentially i've built out is a long form uh, content on the history of mental health system in the uk so someone can get straight away very factual uh, content to just understand the development that's happened uh, over the time and again really important for, for alignment here um, one thing I did do and, and pull out which is slightly different I found Squintle was great for me to consolidate research elsewhere so I'm now in the situational analysis of the UK and all I've done is add resources and references that prove some of the later points some of the reasoning and backs up with evidence uh, why we make some decision decisions in, in the future. So I've got a study here, it's sourced and they can link off to it, dive in. There's another one here, there's another one here, there's another one there. You can download this um, report as well that you can see. Uh, yeah. So, so far we've taken them on a timeline of events. We've got a situational analysis and for me, I wanted to then make it a little bit more human uh, and real. So I've added in some uh, some patient experiences. Um, these names uh, aren't, aren't real names. They're just used yeah. over there. So we've got the source. And again, it starts to make it real for the stakeholders that are looking for, for it as well. We've got some suggestions. Um, we've got some, you know, but basically some candid anecdotal evidence of people's experiences in in the mental health system uh, and we've got a few of those uh, up there uh, as well we may have uh, another literature review here yeah. so you know straight away within yes it might take a little bit longer to read than i've just shown you but every single stakeholder that touches this project is now very clear on the timeline very clear on the situation the problem that yeah. we have very clear on uh, this is following a, a framework uh, called the PASS framework. It's quite a common framework. It's where you present a problem, you agitate the problem, and you present um, some of the service solutions uh, that, that you have there. So I've taken them on a really nice journey, told the yeah. story, uh, and they essentially have a, a lot. They're, they're put into a mode now where you know they can act on that and everyone's aligned. Yeah, and all, you, the, your use of color also helps uh, understand, mm -hmm. I guess, how you have organized this information to, to make it quite simple yeah. to digest uh, for anybody. And yeah, you mentioned, you, you said that uh, you published this board. Is it public or you're intending to? to yeah, it's, it's it? a public board. So okay. I want I want this to be completely open source. So it's public, uneditable. It's not, no one else has added to it necessarily. Yeah. Um, but we, we meet relatively regularly uh, to just take another 
uh, part of this as well. And this is the key thing. Whenever we're approaching projects like this, which is an absolute beast, we need to break it down into little chunks. So I've got mm-hmm. stakeholders from different parts that are experts in different fields that are able to just, I'm able to then as a program manager, pick up uh, one part of it and say, can you research this and find me this? And then I'll, we'll drop that in. So it's really helpful mm. um, for people to dive in and quickly see. And then on the right hand side here, um, what I've got is the, the left is the problem. The right is where we're going and moving to. So it's kind of fits that timeline. It's there's a bit of psychology here um, to leave, the, you know, to leave all of the problems in the past and move forward to the future. Um, we haven't done too much work on this because we really need to dive into, you know, defining the problem to make sure we're creating the right solutions. Um, but I've just dived down into preventative acts, the symptoms, the diagnosis, managing mental health and interventions as well. So for me, these are then the hubs, you know, the, these are the, the central uh, topics that we're going to focus on. And then that these will then branch out uh, as as they go uh, as we move forward um, as well. And then I just added uh, some helpful information down the bottom for people to just read. So organisations that we should keep aware of, any random resources that you can read yeah. and listen into. And I've done a few talks uh, on this matter as well. So presenting the evidence, explaining it here is, is a document as well. So. I think here the mixture of note taking, research, long form, formatting, and yeah. document management. <laughs> um, yeah, bit no, of everything. yeah, but um, I see the potential here also, like uh, for those who have a, um, I don't know, a course or I don't know, have a group of people that they yeah. manage. In a, mm-hmm. Either it could be a course or something like if they are just getting started. I, I know that it's quite difficult to get a start, I don't know, or or also like uh, planning a website and putting a lot of information mm. that you have perhaps and make it public. You can turn it into a board and publish it and share it on social media, like like mm-hmm. this board that you created. Or um, if you have like a, a book or a reading club uh, and then yeah. you can put your notes, organize them like, like this and then distribute, let's say, certain tasks to mm-hmm. the part uh, with different participants and then um yeah i don't know you see that that way i think it's quite quite useful yeah. thank it's, you very much for sharing it no my pleasure it's it's just, it really centralized the knowledge management of this particular project and for me mm-hmm. you know i think when i came across Squintool before that it was so disjointed i'd try and manage it all in my own head my first brain and you know it's just so difficult to really make sense of things and now i have a lot more clarity and i'm clear on the vision what we need to do you know who we need to help us as as this thing grows as it builds out and that's because i know that this is all here you know mm-hmm. i don't have to think about i don't have to think about defining the problem because we have it yeah you know i don't need to worry about preventative measures symptoms things like that because we're working on those um, so it, it's a, it's a strange it's a strange way of really not managing that knowledge uh, in 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 this sense, but also having the depth for for the documentation um, as well. And it's been yeah, it's been it's been great for me to to use this, and everyone who's viewed it has has loved uh, looking at it so far as well. I don't know how else I would do it. <laughs> uh, uh, perhaps one more thing that I would like to ask uh, regarding how you use the screen top is uh, if you have any type of hack or tip that you figure out figure out yourself or learn from other community members perhaps that you would like to share with everybody and that you apply them yeah I would like yeah, to share yeah I think um, it's a yeah tips are an interesting one because I, I mean I love using using the cards uh, and and then the boards and and building it out as well. But I think um, tags tags have been great for me, and I think that's one you know really underrated use of of screen tool. And it's it's mm. one of those things that I think it's not until you start creating something like this, and you know 
uh, adding some knowledge that you need managing uh, mm. in cards if if you're not strict on tagging mm. and backlinking as well and connecting them up yeah. then it's a real pain uh, to to find and to work out and yeah. to to recover that knowledge as well i think one of the I'm not sure which part of it but the, there's an acronym i think in one of the building a second brain tiago forte mm. um methods that that in order to have your knowledge managed efficiently you have to be able to quickly recover that knowledge it's not just it's not just a repository to mm. just leave to sit and gather yeah. dust you know really it's make, making that efficient use of of the knowledge uh, and the projects that you're using for and i think yeah it's not necessarily a tip mm. it's more of a reiteration to to yeah. really be strict on your tag management uh, and and your linking as well because it will help you in the search uh, in in the future as well that's one thing that I I think I learned the hard way in the early days yeah (laughs) Um, so yeah do you have any type of advice uh is there any type of um method that you're using with when tagging or when you are creating your tags I guess that that help you are you using tags for instance for the name of the topic or the project or mm-hmm. are you using some kind of code i know that some people use a code for within their tags but i don't know if you have yeah so my, mine's probably mine's keyword based but it's also uh project based as well so whenever i reference and this yeah you make a really great that's a great question because mm-hmm. when i manage some of the more uh if i'm in notion the more the, the more database like content that needs to be sorted and filtered you know as it may do on a spreadsheet um with that i'm able to reference and assign codes to particular parts of it so for example defining the problem uk all of this side has its own code that if i reference something similar to how product management works on like a feature i, I treat this as a feature and mm. then I'll reference that code if I need to watch anything. If I'm if I've got a repository, if I'm saving articles, YouTube videos, PDFs, I'll add a code to them. Or if I'm asking questions, hypotheses, and making assumptions, I'll add that code to it. So if I'm in here, I can dive into the uh, search, or I can jump into Spotlight, and then the code is there straight away to reference that. So yeah, I highly recommend using not just keywords but also referencing uh, any form of uh, code it's a, it's a great way of easily being able to pull and recover uh, some of that knowledge that may be scattered across different boards or cards yeah that sounds good thank you for sharing that and last question for today uh yeah. i guess uh, after this one we can uh we can finish your your session and I will let you continue with your day. Uh, okay, but Thank let's you. let's see. Um, what are you excited about the most regarding what's coming uh, in the sprint club? Mm. So for me, there's a there's a few different things. I think. I mean, we've got a buzzing community, which is great. So they're you know really helping uh, drive forward the the development uh, of Screen Tool. But for me, I was never really a dark mode user, but it, I think it's one of those things that when you have dark mode in other apps, um, that's one thing that you miss when you move on to, to something else. So yeah, really looking forward to that. But also I'm often on the move quite a bit as well. And I really like how Squintle works um, on, on iPad, uh, on desktop. But I think for me, if there's any kind of connections, API connections that can pull in the more data gathering, uh, I think that's a really important thing. So at the moment, if I'm finding articles, everything like that, I'd love to be able to just automatically assign them to a tag Mm -hmm. and a card or a board in Squintle. At the moment, I'm doing that in Notion whilst I'm on the move, and then I'll add it to a card or a board um, afterwards so i'm really looking forward to how squintle grows uh, grows out and adds those connections to make uh, to make research and the data gathering process 
um, uh, a lot easier. And also if it goes, um, if you go into mobile applications and to make sure that you can edit and move stuff around in cards, I really like how it, it works on iPad, um, but sometimes I just have my phone um, with, with me as well. So any iOS apps and uh, and such going on. But also, what is there anything else that you have significantly in the pipeline over the next uh, six months or year that I should be excited about? I've not been keeping too well, well up with it. Well, yeah, um, especially if you're on the go, perhaps uh, something that will allow you to continue working on your projects is the offline mode that is coming Brilliant. in the upcoming weeks. I don't time. I don't want to say a date. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, perfect, perfect. That is coming, so you probably will feel quite excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, you always, as, as you and all our users probably know, uh, always can go to uh, feedback.sprinkle.com to check mm -hmm. uh, our roadmap, uh, request any type of features, or um, report the bug, or upload uh, any type of uh, request that other users have done. Yeah, perfect. Right. Yeah, that's great. All right, but thank you very much, Charlie, for your time and sh for showing us uh, the, the things that you have been working on. Uh, I believe you are helping a lot of users who are just getting started with the Sprintel and who need a, a little bit of guidance. Um, mm -hmm. So seeing how you have been using it for, for your job and your personal projects uh, helps a lot. Yeah. No, thank you. And I think you're right with the course and the education and the learning. There's so many applications of that structure that I use that may not be uh, too orthodox uh, that hopefully people will, will learn from that. But yeah, if anyone wants me to go through that in more detail, they're more than welcome to to reach out to me. I'm at Charlie Slides on Twitter. I'm more than happy to, to take you through that. Um, or if you've got any questions, just send me a DM. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much, Charlie, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Cheers.